Hey, this is Andrew Franck with Figment, and I'm here today to talk about a service we created called Data Hub. But really what I'm trying to do today is I want to talk to the developers in the audience and specifically uh, developers who have either built on a different blockchain before or, or maybe have never built on a blockchain. And the, the, the thing I want to impress upon you is that um, one of the hardest things that we found as blockchain developers is node management and wrangling nodes. And um, our new service data hub helps you uh, have no more nodes. And so uh, that that's what, what I want to go through today. And so the, the path uh, to, to getting to here was really um, a little bit of a story of our company Figment, where we started out uh, uh, doing different kind of proof of work mining. Then we went into proof of stake validating. Then we created a tool, which I'll go into, which is called Hubble, which is really an analytics tool where we try to grab a bunch of blockchain data and uh, do analytics on it which led us to this indexing problem. But all along the way, um, we've really been struggling with uh, managing nodes, lots of nodes. And so we have built a number of things on Avalanche and I'll also demo those for you today. Um, but I wanna kind of give you insight into our own you know, journey we've been on for the past two and a half or three years, uh, all the missteps we've had, some, some things we think we've figured out and really kind of um, describe why we made the service data hub and why we think it's gonna be valuable uh, for developers. So as I mentioned, um, we created this tool called Hubble. So Hubble, like the Hubble telescope. And if it's at hubble.figment.io. Um, we currently have, I think, 10 networks on Hubble. So it's like a block explorer just for proof of stake. So there's a lot of um, uh, interesting things you can find in there. Um, I'll flip over to it really quickly and just kind of give you a tour through it. And so as I'm looking through it, um, I'll point out uh, a few different uh, a few different areas uh, where we, we sort of uh, uh, had issues along the way. So I flipped over to uh, the demo screen now. And so this is our website. So hubble.figma.io. I clicked into this network called Terra and we're seeing all sorts of things uh, about this blockchain. You know, here's the current block. Here's how the voting power trends over time. Here's how fast the average blocks go. And all these things, um, you know, are technically available if you go back and look at each block by block, um, but they're kind of hard to find. And so here's a list of validators. You know, here's the Figma validator right here. Um, I can click in there and I can see each individual block, you know, how did people vote? What's, who was the proposer? All these historical analytics. And so we created this tool to really figure out what is happening on blockchains. Um, but along the way, we realized that even though some of this information might be available on a block by block basis, some of it gets purged uh, unless you're keeping an archive. Um, and so what we did is we wanted to start uh, uh, solving that problem, which is really an indexing problem. And so I'll, I'll go into to the approach there and make sure my other, screen real quick. Okay, so um, here is, here's how that looks behind the scenes. And so to, to get a, a website like we just showed, um, at the bottom layer here, I'm all the way down at the bottom where it says full node. So there's many different kinds of, of full nodes or, or sort of complete list of the ledger of a blockchain. Some have RPC access, some have a different REST access, some have GraphQL interfaces, some have WebSocket interfaces, um, but you need to sort of figure out a way to, to grab all those different sources of information. And you can either query it in real time, um, but what you'll find is that if you're going directly to a full node, um, there's a lot of missing features, such as if you want to you know, get all transactions uh, uh, for an account, usually on a blockchain, that's something that's not available uh, or it's hard to figure out. So you have this sort of middle layer, this indexing layer where you're trying to keep track of what's happened. Um, earlier when I was demoing Hubble, I showed that you know here's here's how things have tracked over time. Here's how um, the who the proposer was. Here's their uptime. And then all the way up at the top, you have your actual application. So this is what your users see. This is where you use interact with your web app. Um, but uh, there's all the stuff that happens below, um, which you really, if you're coming from a, a sort of web two or just reusing a database, you know, you just have to worry about all these different data sources. And so, this is what's behind the scenes of Hubble. You know, the users just see the top layer, but there's all sorts of stuff going on behind the scenes. And so, with this product we created called Data Hub, um, we we're trying to basically. Uh, focus in this little rectangle down here, we're taking that away and providing that as a service. So you don't have to worry about uh, running a bunch of nodes, you know, in, in the case of, I think right now we, we're running, I think hundreds of nodes across multiple, I think 30 different blockchains. And so if you want to uh, provide a service like that, um, you don't have to do that. We sort of solve that DevOps problem for you. Um, and then the second problem that we solve is in this sort of orange box indexing, um, we are uh, sort of creating these high level analytics for you. Um, so you don't have to worry about that either. All you have to do, is focus on this top layer, um, uh, which is where your actual app is, whether that is a mobile app or a desktop app or, or whatever. 
Um, we're trying to make it so we'll take the infrastructure pains uh, away for you. So just as a, a quick bullet point version uh, of what I went through, just to make sure I, I, I catch on all the things uh, that we're, we're doing is uh, we're taking our experience of, of running a high uptime, high availability validators, and we're now giving uh, all sorts of developers access to those uh, that same infrastructure uh, via APIs. Um, I didn't mention this yet, but uh, because it's not a huge part of Hubble, but you can also submit on-chain transactions. So if you're looking for a gateway um, to do transactions, that's also available in this tool. Um, like I said, uh, we provide higher level APIs so you can integrate with uh, sort of REST uh, style APIs that you're used to. Um, there's support. So one of the biggest challenges that we found is for new people building on blockchains is they don't know where they can ask questions. They don't know where they can get help. And I'll, I'll describe a little bit more about our approach there later, but just uh, keep that uh, uh, as a bookmark and we'll come, come back to it. Um, I think I hit on these other points here in terms of, you know, we started from a place of being a validator and the constant uptime requirements, the, the high availability, the sort of enter enterprise grade infrastructure we've had to develop uh, for the past two and a half years. And we're, now we're giving that um, to sort of developers uh, to build on and see what they're going to build. So if you, if you kind of look at the, the behind the scenes of what this might look like, um, you know, here's where developers are building, they're interacting with a number of different blockchains uh, through Data Hub. Um, and so, uh, yes, we are very excited to support Avalanche and um, we're supporting a number of different APIs. And so um, everything from all, all three of the, the, the main chains, uh, I think most, uh, all the APIs are supported except maybe the admin um, API, which really doesn't make sense uh, in, in a public service. Um, but yeah, that will all be available to you. So if you want to you know, start deploying smart contracts on, on C chain, or if you want to do transfers, you know, all that will be available without running any infrastructure um, on your own. So um, I want to also show you what this looks like. So this is a website where right now it is in a sort of waitlist invite only mode. And we're planning to open this up to everyone um, by November 17th. So um, I'll provide some links at the end where you can go and, and see where you can sign up and get information about the waitlist. But soon um, everyone will have access to this. So what I want to do is kind of go and show what this looks like. So I'm going to flip back to my other screen. Okay, that should be working. Oops. Okay. Oops, I need to log in real quick. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, you can have a number of different services uh, as a user of Data Hub. So here, this account uh, has four configured services, Celo and Terra and Cosmos and Tezos. And within each of these different blockchains, there could be multiple services available. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, Avalanche has a number of uh, blockchains by default and a number of APIs within those blockchains. All those can be offered up. Um, so here we're just showing a high level, how many requests this account is, is making per hour. Um, we can drill into much more uh, uh, specific analytics so this is Cosmos. And so within Cosmos, you can see all the different services available to you. Um, there's a low level RPC interface. Um, we provide both archive nodes and what are you know, sort of standard full nodes. So if you require uh, you know, some of the capabilities of an archive node, that's available to you. And if you don't require it, don't require it uh, then usually the full node is usually a little bit more performant and faster. One thing we do that's also unique is that we provide a index uh, search service. So we go and we grab all the information about transactions and we actually index them for you. So uh, you can do all sorts of uh, unique ways to search transactions. Um, one example is you could say, you know, I wanna search for these three types of transactions from this start date to this end date that have this uh, uh, you know, string in the memo field. Um, you can get very, very granular with this, this sort of higher level search function that, that we offer up for you. Um, and as I mentioned, um, we have uh, you know, the basic documentation, how to use the service. This is an API key that will rotate, so don't worry about that. Um, it's very easy to, to go and uh, change your API key. Um, so that, that's very uh, straightforward to do. Um, the other thing I'll mention is we talked earlier about the challenge of where do I go when I have questions or how do I even get started here? Um, this is a sneak peek. So I think you're, you're probably the first people who are gonna be seeing this, um, but this is something that we'll also be launching uh, coming up soon. But I wanted to show just a quick sneak peek of it today. And um, we have a new service, which is called Learn, uh, Figment Learn. 
where this is going to be the place where people come to learn about anything about Web3. Uh, you know, basic documentation. Uh, we have a special set of pathways and tutorials where you can go and complete them. Here's one for Avalanche. So we spent some time um, working with people who have the official documentation and also creating uh, new tutorials. Um, so you can come to one place and find everything you want to know. Uh, Avalanche 101, um, basically how everything works in Avalanche, uh, everything you might expect. Um, also, there's uh, the, the, all the reference APIs and documentation. And then there's also a list of tutorials that we've grabbed from various places. And again, we've had to work with the, the different protocol teams and different people to sort of try to bring this into one place. And so the idea here is there's, there's going to be original content, but also, you know, sort of the, the standard reference content here as well. So everything from deploying smart contracts, creating NFTs, all this is here for you um, in one place. And so if you were, were trying to figure out, you know, where can I go to learn more about Avalanche? Um, here's a great place to do it. And again, we'll be launching this um, coming up probably with, within two weeks, but um, it's all here for you to see now. Okay, let me flip back to the other presentation. All right, so that was the demo data hub and then sort of the upcoming uh, service, which is called Learn. So um, here I wanna show all the other things that, that we have going on. Um, for Avalanche right now. Um, so if you wanted to check out this service, it's just figment.io slash data slash Avalanche, but there's more that we have going on as well. So um, you, I, I showed Hubble earlier. Um, there's going to be a uh, Avalanche working on Hubble. I've seen the internal demo. It looks great. Um, we've got a lot of uh, things showed in there. Um, I also, I guess I need to flip back real quick. Mm -hmm. We've also gone and uh, created a version of Rosetta, which is a way to integrate with different wallets and exchanges for Avalanche. So we've worked closely with, um, with the team to, to figure this out. So this is something that is now open source. You can start looking at it, start uh, submitting any uh, uh, issues you have with it. But if you've ever wanted to use Rosetta with Avalanche to either submit a transaction or to, to read, um, this is now something that we we're open sourcing as well. So that's going to be exciting. And then the last piece, is um, we have the indexer that's going to be powering Hubble will also be open uh, as an API and a service we're going to provide uh, in, in Data Hub. So there's a, a ton that we're doing um, with Avalanche. There's a, there's a ton that's going to be open source. And the strategy is that we're going to go and open source this sort of low level infrastructure, um, but then we'll host it as a service. So um, everything you see that we're doing, um, if you want to go and run it yourself, that's great, you can. Um, but if you prefer to just focus on your application and sort of let us uh, handle the lower level parts, um, then that's really what the business model is going to be behind Data Hub. Okay, so here are all the, the links which you can also provide. Um, I mentioned that there is currently a, a wait list to sign up. That's great. We've had a lot of people signing up for that um, and that should be made to the public uh, later this month. Um, we have um, a Discord as well, where in addition to that, uh, that that product, which I showed briefly called Learn. I mean, come and talk with us in our Discord. We've been answering lots of questions there uh, about people that are building. And what we're really trying to do with this product data hub and uh, sort of this focus on, on learning is trying to create a community of Web3 developers. And so we, you know, we want to talk to people who either, you know, maybe built on a different chain and want to build an avalanche um, or they've never built on a blockchain and they just want to know where to get started. We're, we're really building that Web3 community of developers. And so um, we're almost at the, the end of my presentation now, but I just want to kind of uh, remind of, of what we talked through. So we, we went through uh, this sort of new service we're launching called Data Hub, showed how our experience running validators and uh, building Hubble has really led us to this, this moment of uh, figuring a lot of things out for ourselves and then making it available to community. The next things you'll see from us um, are this, this uh, sort of Data Hub product really focused on uh, building the Web3 community of developers. And then the sneak peek, which you guys got today for the first time was uh, this new product Learn, which you'll be seeing a lot more of in the future. Um, so, so that's it for me. Um, thanks for your time. And I'm happy to answer any questions or please email me. You can see my email uh, right there on the slide.